Wake up to your full potential and create the life you want. Hey, and welcome back to UQ. Today I would like to introduce an international best-selling book, The Miracle Morning by Hal Elrod. If you want to change your life for the better, or if you want to form good habits, this book is definitely for you. The author, Hal Elrod, experienced really tough times. Firstly, he was in a car accident in his early 20s. His heart stopped for 6 minutes and he broke 11 bones. He woke up to be told that he might not be able to walk again. Nevertheless, he recovered through sheer willpower and persistence. Not only was he able to walk again, but he went back to his job and achieved the highest performance ever for his own career. Furthermore, he started a coaching business and wrote a best-selling book too. However, he faced a second challenge, the global financial crisis in 2008. Not only did he go broke, but he was depressed as well. He says the second challenge was harsher because no one took care of him like they did when he had the accident. This says a lot about the state of mental health care and its deficiencies, doesn't it? Then his friend told him to start running. This was his turning point. Although he was not a runner, he just decided to run as he had no other solutions. As he ran, his mind cleared and then, based on his experience, he created the Miracle Morning Method. His Miracle Morning habits helped him overcome his difficulties by reducing stress levels, improving focus and clearing the mind. It also helped over 10,000 people worldwide to improve their lives and achieve their goals. In this video, I would like to share with you not only the Miracle Morning's habits this book recommends, but also the scientific point of view into these habits and see how effective they would be. In the first part, I will explain the reasons why most of us cannot improve our lives and are stuck in mediocrity, although most of us want to change our lives for the better. In the second part, I will explain the six morning habits this book recommends, which are known as savers. Silence, affirmation, visualization, exercise, reading and scribing. Successful people often know what led them to a successful life. They form habits and practice them regularly. In the last part, I would like to give you more scientific insights into these habits. Although the miracle morning habits seem to be a great way to improve our lives and actually improve a lot of people's lives, I would like to analyze them from the scientific point of view. Let's get started. First of all, whether it's our career, relationships, finances or our physiques, I think we all have some areas which we want to improve. We know we are not living to our full potential. We all want to create a life we want. Nonetheless, most of us are stuck in mediocrity. According to the Social Security Administration in the United States, if you take any 100 people at the start of their working careers and follow them for the next 40 years until they reach retirement age, only one will be wealthy, four will be financially secure, five will continue working, not because they want to, but because they have to, 36 will be dead, and 54 will be broke and dependent on friends, family, relatives, and the government to take care of them. This means only 5% of the people are financially secure, and the vast majority are struggling financially and settling for less than they want in life wishing they had more, living with regret, and never understanding what they could be, do, and have all that they want. So why are we stuck in mediocrity? Why can't we create the life we want? There are seven reasons. 1. Rearview mirror syndrome. 2. Lack of purpose. 3. Isolating incidents. 4. Lack of accountability. 5. Mediocre circle of influence. 6 lack of personal development, and seven, lack of urgency. The first cause of mediocrity is rear view mirror syndrome. Our subconscious minds are equipped with a self-limiting rear view mirror through which we continuously relive and recreate our past. This means we make choices in our everyday lives from what time we wake up and which goals we set through to the limitations of our past experiences. The second cause is lack of purpose. If we are asked what our purpose in life is, most of us cannot clearly answer that question. We tend to take things one day at a time and don't serve a higher purpose. We live the path of least resistance. We will need to figure out our life purpose. In my other video, I summarized Man's Search for Meaning by Viktor Frankl. 
If you wonder about the purpose of your life, I recommend that you watch that video as well. The third cause is isolated incidents. The book says we mistakenly assume each choice we make, each individual action we take is only affecting that particular moment or circumstances. We must realise the consequences of our choices, actions or even thoughts are huge as every single choice, action and thought determines who we are becoming which will ultimately determine the quality of our lives. Personally I couldn't agree more with this. We tend to fall into this trap easily. For example, even if we eat cake or fast food or skip workouts, making excuses like it's a special occasion or I am too tired today, it does not change our lives right away. Either you make a right choice or a wrong choice, your life doesn't seem to be that different, but these small choices or actions all contribute to who you are becoming. If you keep eating ice cream or fast food every day, you know you will look and feel completely different to a different version of yourself who decided to eat healthier food and do exercise every day. The fourth cause is a lack of accountability. People read self-help books, but 95% of people do not implement what they learned from the book because they are not held accountable. When we were kids, parents disciplined us, but once we grow up, we have freedom freedom to avoid accountability. We have no accountability to commit to what we decided to. The book suggests getting an accountability partner. If you promise to see someone at a gym, you will be accountable. If you are going to implement the miracle morning, you will want to find an accountability partner. The fifth cause is a mediocre circle of influence. It is said you are the average of the five people you spend the most time with, as per the quote by Jim Rohn. If you are surrounded by people who are lazy and negative, who always blame others or circumstances for their own lives, you will end up being one of them. It's very important who you hang out with. The sixth cause is a lack of personal development. Your level of success will rarely exceed your level of personal development because success is something you attract by the person you become. Again, another great quote by Jim Rohn. Most of us don't spend time on personal development or not enough. This is exactly why we will need to implement the miracle morning habits. The seventh cause is lack of urgency. We all want to improve our lives, but without lack of urgency, we will keep thinking, someday life will work itself out, and that someday will never come. You don't want to regret, we could have done this or that at the end of our lives. It is now that matters. Again, what you do now determines what you will become, and who you will become. So if you want to improve your life, start the miracle morning today. So far, I've explained the seven causes of mediocrity. We now know these things, but we cannot change. Why? Because we are too busy. We're just too busy living everyday life and don't have time to spend on personal development. That is why we need to implement the miracle morning. This book says, by implementing the miracle morning, we will be able to improve ourselves physically, intellectually, emotionally and spiritually. Now it's time for you to choose. Choose to repeat the same thing as yesterday and you will be stuck in where you are or you choose to do something different so you will become a better version of yourself. But how can we make that time? Hal Elrod suggests waking up early, but how? I know it's not easy for some of us, especially those who are night owls. But he says when you delay waking up until you have to, you're actually resisting your life. The book gives us a five-step snooze wake-up strategy. 1. Set your intentions before bed. Your first thought in the morning is usually your last thought, right before you went to bed. 2. Move your alarm across the room. 3. Brush your teeth. Mindless activities give your body time to wake up. 4. Drink a full glass of water. Dehydration causes fatigue. If you're tired during the day, rehydrate. In the morning, rehydrate ASAP to replace the water you lacked or lost while sleeping. 5. Dress in your workout gear. Morning exercise is crucial to maximizing your potential. It puts you in a peak mental, physical and emotional state. These steps are self-explanatory, so I am not going to dig into details but taking these five steps will make it easier for you to wake up in the morning. If you want to know these five strategies in detail, I recommend you read the book. 
Okay, now that you know you can wake up early, let me explain the six components of the Miracle Morning, which are known as Life Savers. S-A-V-E-R-S. S is for silence. A is for affirmation. V is for visualization. E is for exercise. R is for reading. And S for scribing. I'll explain them in more detail. The first practice is silence. What is your usual morning like? Busy, hectic and rushing? I guess most people use these words to describe how we spend our morning. But if you want to start a day in a calm and peaceful way, silence will be the best way. It will reduce stress and help you gain clarity. You can pray, reflect, breathe or think of gratitude for about five minutes. Second practice is affirmation. Affirmation is designed to program your subconscious mind for success. You can write your own affirmation so you can improve your chosen areas. Affirmation proponents claim that by repeating your affirmation daily, you can develop your mindset to the next level. The third practice is visualization. You train your brain to see things as you would like them to be. Hal says, visualize living your ideal day, performing all tasks with ease, confidence and enjoyment. Steps for Miracle Morning Visualization are 1. Get ready. You can use some background music, such as bark or classical music. Sit comfortably and breathe deeply. Close your eyes. 2. Visualize what you really want. Forget logic, limits, practicality. If you could have anything, what would you have? What could you do? What would you be? Don't feel guilty about it. 3. Visualize who you need to be and what you need to do. See yourself doing the positive actions you need to do daily, such as exercising, writing, calling, etc., and that you're enjoying the process. The fourth practice for savers is exercise. For good health and increased energy, you must exercise consistently. You don't have to go for a run or to the gym. You can do something more simple like yoga but you just need to get moving and get blood and oxygen flowing to the brain. The fifth practice is reading. Reading is to the mind what exercise is to the body and prayer is to the soul. We become the books we read, Matthew Kelly. Hal recommends a minimum of 10 pages a day, but before you read a book, ask yourself why you are reading it, what you want to learn from the book, and keep the outcome in mind. Interact with your book. Underline, highlight, take notes and reread. The sixth practice is scribing. Scribing just means writing, but a W would have ruined the acronym. This means journaling, jotting down ideas, making gratitude lists or putting anything that comes into your mind. Hal recommends you review your journal occasionally. You'll experience gratitude as you look back over all the experiences, lessons and accomplishments you noted. So, I've explained all six of the Miracle Morning practices. The Miracle Morning Life Savers is completely customizable. Hal suggests five minutes for silence, affirmation, visualization and journaling and 20 minutes for exercise and, and reading. But you can spend more or less time depending on your needs and preference. You can customize the sequence of savers as you like as well. Just customize your miracle morning to fit your lifestyle and achieve your goals. Now I'd like to give you some scientific insights into the miracle morning practices. We are all busy, so we don't want to spend our precious time on things that are not effective, do we? The miracle morning is a great book, but the problem with this kind of book is that they are only based on one person's experience, the sample size of 1 or n equals 1. Yes, there have been quite a few followers of Hal who claim that the Miracle Morning had a positive impact on them, but you would not know how many people have tried and failed. So, let's have a look at what the scientists would say. From the scientific point of view, it would be safe to recommend meditation, exercise, reading and journaling to everyone, because these are practices that have a lot of scientific studies proven how effective and beneficial they are for us. There is more and more evidence that exercise is good not only for your physical health, but also for your mental health and brain. Any kind of exercise would be beneficial for you, but if you want to maximize the benefit, I would recommend HIIT or Tabata, which is a type of HIIT, or high intensity interval training. Studies show that HIIT improves both aerobic fitness and muscular endurance. 
Also, a meta-analysis of 41 studied showed that HIIT is the best way to lose body fat, providing 28.5% greater reduction compared to the other exercises. The American Psychological Association, or APA, also recommends exercise, meditation, reading, music, walking, spending time with your family and friends, massage and praying as the most effective ways to reduce stress. A study by the University of Minnesota found that reading can reduce stress by up to 68%. By reading, you can gain knowledge and reduce stress. It's killing two birds with one stone, isn't it? Journaling is also a great habit. A study from 2003 found that people who kept a gratitude journal, or like five things per day, for 10 weeks felt 25% happier afterwards. So, if you start the miracle morning from today or tomorrow, make sure you do these things. But I would like you to be careful when you do affirmation and visualisation. A study by the University of Waterloo in 2009 found that positive self-statements can be ineffective or even harmful to people with low self-esteem. Among people with high self-esteem, affirmation worked to a limited degree. Repeating positive self-statements may be beneficial to some people, but backfire for other people who need them the most. The book also recommends visualisation. Visualise what you want to achieve, and that will increase the probability of your success. Sounds like the law of attraction, but is it scientifically proven? In a study in 1999 by the University of California, college freshmen mentally simulated the process for doing well on an exam, or simulated a desired outcome. Results indicated that process simulation enhanced studying and improved grades. By simulating the process, students were able to plan them well and it also helped reduce anxiety. So if you were going to visualize in the morning, instead of just visualizing the end result, try to simulate the process to achieve that goal. Like Hal said, the miracle morning is customizable. So customize these habits to suit your needs. He says if you really don't have much time in the morning, you can do them in six minutes or even do it at night. The most important thing is to take action now and form a habit. Remember what you decide, choose and do will shape what you will become. If you make the miracle morning your habit, your life will surely change for the better. Today I talked about the book The Miracle Morning by Hal Elrod. To summarise, we can create the life we want but we are stuck in mediocrity because of seven reasons. They are 1. Rearview mirror syndrome 2. Lack of purpose 3. Isolating incidents 4. Lack of accountability 5. Mediocre circle of influence 6. Lack of personal development and 7. Lack of urgency But by starting the miracle morning, we can gradually change our life for the better. The Miracle Morning Habits are abbreviated as Lifesavers. S is for silence, A is for affirmation, V is for visualization, E is for exercise, R is for ready, and S is for scribing. The book suggests making them habits in the morning. Lastly, from the scientific point of view, meditation, exercise, reading, and journaling are proven effective ways to make you healthier, both physically and mentally. So I suggest making at least these four things your habits. Remember, every single choice we make will shape who we become. So let's make better choices and start new habits from today. Thank you for watching UQ. If you like this video, please subscribe or hit the like button below. See you next time.